is everywhere. Oh, I used to look tremendous. Did I get into the denims thing? Think what you're saying, woman. I never got out of it. And we spent hours with little pots of enamel paint as well, painting the names of our favourite bands across the backs of our jackets too. Even at school, the art class had a project where you could do a, a band's design on the back of your denim, and the, and the school was judging it. Are you keen on it, Brian? Oh, yeah. Everybody was going home at night with a needle and thread, you know, like really manly. <laughs> Digging it out, you know, hey, we're in the rock. Smart. And one band, more than any, made denim de rigueur through several eons of heads down, no nonsense, mindless boogie. The number one rock and roll band in the land. Will you welcome Status Quo? Amazing. When you get a bit older, you'll never admit to being into them at all because it's like so uncool. <laughs> they did everything with three chords that anybody could possibly do. I like the quo, and I don't care who knows it. But the hard rocking status quo hasn't always been the um, status quo. When they started in the late 60s, they were more Lawrence Llewellyn than Led Zeppelin. Ladies and gentlemen, up from number 15 of last week to number 10 of this week, pictures of Max Tickman, the status quo. It was an altogether frillier and more fragrant quo who debuted with pictures of Max Tickman in 1968. When I first became aware of status quo was with records like Pictures of Matchstick Men and they were dressed in all the Carnaby Street outfits with all the ruffle shirts and stuff like that. Very, very uh, well-dressed, smart boys, you know, playing pop songs. Welcome to the sky, I see your eyes, a funny kind of yellow. I tried to copy the uh, Hey Joe by his name? Jimi Hendrix and came out with Matchstick Men. Then we had this thing that we were a psychedelic band, so we were a psychedelic band with a rock, a, a soul set, and we were rocking, it was confusing. Initially, I mean, we were, we were quite happy to be a pop band. Sort of get up on the stage in front of a hundred or so screaming girls was amazing, because that's really what I'd always wanted in my life. It's amazing how quickly that kind of wears off and you want real appreciation for what you're doing rather than because they've seen you on top of the pops, you know. Excellent about the status quo. This is Big Fat Mama. Quo underwent a mini evolution and emerged hairier, heavier and louder. We went into the underground scene around London. We go in and people are sitting down cross-legged on the floor, you know long hair, trench coat, album under one arm, pint in the other hand, you know, and just kind of sitting there. We went on and started pumping this kind of boogie at them. They all start nodding their heads. And, I mean, we hadn't sort of done all this. I mean, we left some of that. And to get closer to them, you sort of, <clears throat> if you excuse the expression, open your legs, right? And sort of get down there like that. And that's how the whole quo stance sort of came about. You turn your arm on, put your guitar on, see what that. And then here we come down and you start with this movement together and two of you moving together or three of you moving together and then you saw certain people in the audience were, hmm. And there was this great feeling of everybody, hey, this is it's a collective consciousness going on. time you would see anything was at the end of a number when you put in your hair back. Ah, oh, there you all are. And like that, blah, 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 next song, head down, and away you go again. See you. Heavy metal is the most popular current form of pop, highly amplified music characterized by heavy and insistent thudding. So heavy and insistent that its mainly young, male, denim or leather-clad fans respond in the only way possible, by banging their heads in time with 